should I start a bounce house business? That's the question you keep asking yourself and you actually can't seem to come up with any negatives of doing it. Well, I'm here to teach you what it's really like to start a bounce house business. I'm gonna cover the good, the bad, and the brutal so you can make an informed decision of whether or not you should start a bounce house business or just stay at your day job and continue playing softball. I'm Nick Glassett, owner of The Jump Off. Let's start your bounce house business. So I'm gonna do a nice little bullet point style list here of what it's like to start a bounce house business, okay? We're gonna do the right thing, I think, and we're gonna start off with the pros, okay? The positivity. Let's start off with the good stuff. One of the first things I hear from new bounce house business owners is they got into the industry because it was so easy. I hear this actually a lot from people that I consult with. I do consulting on my Patreon page one-on-one, -on -one, and I'm also one of the leaders of what's called the Jumpstart Program put on by Event Hawk. If you're interested in that, it teaches you how to go from $0 to $100,000 in revenue in your bounce house business. There's a link down in the description. Go check that out. So let's answer the question. It's so easy. You just saw me come in your backyard. I was there for 23 minutes. I set up a gigantic water slide by myself and you paid me $385 and then I was nice. So you tipped me. Damn, you wanna start your own bounce house business because that is some sweet margin, baby. Yep, I get it. I totally get it. We're gonna get into that one a little bit later and we'll uh, unpack it and figure out why there's pros and cons to that one little detail. The next pro that you have is that it's a low barrier of entry. You don't need to go to school for this. You don't need any fancy certifications. You don't need any inspections. You just buy a bounce house or four and start renting them out, right? Eh, not always the case. If you're in Ohio, you've gotta get every single bounce house inspected. If you're in Philadelphia, there's more red tape to start in this business you could ever possibly imagine. There is some states where there is no real big hoops to jump through, okay? But that doesn't mean there's not hoops to jump through. We'll get to this one in a minute too. Next item that's a positive. This one actually really is a positive. You get to bring the fun to the kids and to the families. Yep, absolutely, positively, yes on that one. There is a sort of magic dude that comes with dropping off a bounce house on Saturday morning to a family that has a party today. The kids are excited, the adults are excited. It is pretty freaking magical. It's a great feeling and you are the hero. Now, this isn't necessarily a con, but there is the other side of that. You gotta remember, there is some point in time you're gonna have to go pick it up and be the enemy. That is usually a much less dramatic and you're not that big of an enemy, but, but just know that's coming. Another positive note here or another pro, you may have a lot of the stuff you already need. You already drive a pickup truck. Maybe you've got an SUV and your dad's 32 year old trailer doesn't have lights anymore, but like it works. Like you may have some of the equipment to kind of get started in the early stages. That's cool. That's definitely a pro. There is specific equipment you're gonna need down the line. We'll get to that in a little bit, but you can start with what you have lying around your house, potentially. Another pro here is it's kind of flexible, right? It's a rental business. So if they rent it and they need it for a party that's from two o'clock to four o'clock on a Saturday, who's to say you can't just drop it off on Friday and go pick it up on Sunday and do no work at all on Saturday. It's flexible and you've got a busy schedule because you have kids and a job. So this is gonna be a side hustle. Plus you coach soccer and you got all these things going on. So there's flexibility to the bounce house business. It is true, but there is also a truth to that one that we're gonna get to a little bit later. That pros list isn't looking so pro anymore now that you've got a pro giving you the inside scoop, huh? All right, here we go. Let's get into some of the cons, some of the negativity, the tough parts, the truth. Here we go. Here we go. Con number one. It is not as easy as I make it look. I promise you. So the other day we picked up a last second rental. We had two full trucks and trailers going out with about seven or eight rentals on each trailer and another one came through. It didn't fit on the route. So I took the third truck and I just took it myself, okay? We have three motorized dollies at the jump off. So each of those trailers had a rolls all on it and then I took the kind of the loner one, all right? I have the equipment to make this look easy. So I pull up to the guy's house at 829 like I said I was, 
I got out of the truck. He said, holy shit, you're the only bounce house business that's ever been on time ever. And you're like one minute early. He was very impressed. I said, yep, absolutely, dude. I'll be in and I'll be out. No time. He's like, yep, that sounds cool. Let me know what you can help, what I need to help with. Mm, bro, you don't need help with anything. I got this all down to an absolute science. So the dolly's already got the inflatable on it. I unstrap it from the trailer. I rock it down. A tarp goes on. I got steak bags. All my anchors go on. Tarp stakes are in that anchor bag. Then the blower goes on top and the hammer also inside the steak bag. I got everything I need. I come down the ramp. I go right into his backyard, literally driving um, a very large 21 foot slide by myself with one finger because I have a motorized dolly. Get in the backyard. He says, here's where we want to put it. Fantastic. I have a whole entire system of how we roll out a tarp. It takes me like no time at all. I set up the tarp. I know exactly where to drop the unit on the tarp. I do that. I roll it out. I know where every single zipper vent is. I close up all six of them. Okay. He runs power for me. I plug into the blower. We start inflating the slide. As the slide's coming up, I take the rolls all back to the trailer, get it all strapped down. I come back and check on the slide and it's going nice and good. It comes up. I bump it around. I know exactly how to move these once they're blown up. Okay. I'm setting up a 500 pound slide by myself and I know how to move it and tweak it and get it just right. I then know where all the anchor points go. I know how many anchors it needs. I do that super fast. I go talk to the guy. He's actually paid in full. We don't have to do anything. I give him a magnet and a little business card to give me a Google review. I'm back in the truck. Truck has started, air conditioning is blasting on me. I was there for 23 minutes. That's what you see, okay? I make that process look very smooth because I've been doing this since 2019, okay? What you don't see is how long my office manager took making the routes, okay? So you have that many drop-offs going out, right? We had roughly 17 events that day. You've got to route 17 things on two trucks, third truck if you count my one. That takes a long time to do. Where are you going to organize that so you can get that to your employees? We have a whole entire Google spreadsheet that is shared with all the guys that takes care of all the schedule, okay? But you don't see any of that background stuff, okay? How do you keep all of the clients organized? How do you know when their drop off is gonna be and if you're gonna be on time? How do you know how much they paid, like their deposit, okay? They all gave you a deposit or they paid in full. Who has a balance, who doesn't? Where do you communicate that? It's a lot, dude. There is a lot that you don't see. Well, I'd like to take a second here to talk about our video sponsor for today, Inflatable Office. Inflatable Office handles all that stuff. It's software that handles all of that stuff that I just named, plus it's a website that's built for you. This is gonna get better in just a second. Beautiful website, okay, that tracks your inventory, takes your deposits, they sign their rental agreement there, it tracks everything for you. It's got a delivery planner where you drag and drop every single thing and it shows you interactive and the moment on a map what kind of routes you're making, what kind of loops you're making so you're not going over here and over here and over here and over here. You can make a nice big loop and you can set it all up right there in Inflatable Office, okay? Now, here's the best part. You can get all of that software for freaking free if you have less than 10 units. So there's a link down in the description. You can go click it. Go get a demo, check out Inflatable Office. It's absolutely fantastic. It is the rental software that the Jump Off uses. I absolutely swear by it. I absolutely love it. You should go check it out. It will make your life a lot easier, okay? If you're less than 10 units, it's free. You do have to pay a hosting fee of $39 a month, but the actual software is all free. If you're over 10 units, it's tiered. However many units you have is how much it's gonna cost you. It's the number one most important invention in the bounce house business. I promise you, I do this a lot. I teach this a lot. I make a lot of these videos. I know my stuff. This is the number one most important invention in the history of the bounce house business. Go check out Inflatable Office down in the description. Okay, so it's not as easy as you thought, okay? Well, you're still, uh, you're still into this, right? Because you're like, I don't care. I can work hard, I'm an organized gal. And, and I'm, all, I'm all good, I can go. Cool, let's move on to con number two. It's just not as cheap as you thought it was gonna be. Now I know that after you rented from a guy like me and you saw how easy it appeared, you went on Facebook Marketplace and you saw that there's a used bounce house on there for $600. So you thought, holy shit, I can just buy a $600 bounce house. We'll just rent it out on Facebook Marketplace, see if we can get a little side income going. I can start an entire bounce house business for $600. Wrong. You, my friend, forgot insurance. 
So insurance is going to run you roughly $5,000 per year as of recording this in June, 2023. The further away you got from the date that I just said, it probably got more expensive. Also, right now is June. So if you're looking to start a bounce house business and it's late April, it's May, it's June, it's July, these insurance companies are inundated with people just like you trying to start a bounce house business that didn't know they needed insurance and didn't know that it was that big of a deal, right? You just thought it was like car insurance. Like you just go through progressive and boom, you have coverage. Wrong, that is not exactly how it works, okay? If you're trying to get insurance in April, May, June, July, potentially August, you're looking at two to four weeks, two to four weeks, plus 37 hoops they're gonna make you jump through because guess what? This is actually a pretty dangerous industry. Kids can and will get hurt on these inflatables and that my friend is why insurance is so freaking important. It's also why it's pretty expensive, $5,000 a year. You're like, wait a minute, if I buy my one $600 bounce house, and you start doing some math and you gotta rent it out how many times in order to make $5,000? And that's probably more than I think I'm gonna rent it out anyway. Like I'm, I'm literally gonna be in the hole because insurance is so expensive. Yep, told you it's not as cheap to start a bounce house business as you thought. Which brings us to con number three. In order to start a real bounce house business, you need to have at least five units, okay? Of those five units, maximum one should be a bounce house. Just They just don't rent that often. And when they do rent, they just don't make that good of money. You just, you don't want bounce houses, okay? You want wet dry combos, which is a bounce house with a slide, which makes it what's called a combo. That's kind of the in industry term, combo. And then you want it to where it can be used as a dry slide in the spring and fall, or has a little hose attachment, a pool potentially, or a bumper at the bottom to where it's safe to use as a water slide. It's intended use is water slide or dry slide, okay? You can rent those out 52 weeks a year. Now, if you're in Michigan, you're not gonna be running things out 52 year, weeks a year, but that dry combo will start going in April. And then in July, it's gonna go as a wet combo. And then in September, it'll be going as a dry combo again. You can literally rent it your entire season, okay? If you're in Miami, if you're in South Texas, if you're in SoCal, you can rent 52 weeks a year. Those wet dry combos, okay, give you the most consistent income of anything, right? The other thing you're gonna want is water slides. Nothing shorter than 18 feet probably just want to get 18 foot single lane slides to start so you can actually roll them and move them as a new person okay those are going to bring you your highest value your highest dollars more income okay but it's peaked okay obviously maybe it's not peaked but it's like that okay so you don't rent them much in april then depending on where you are may they'll start to go june july are hot okay august is hot and then school starts and they kind of taper back off they make the most money though they make more money than wet dry combos okay to buy all five of those brand new, you're in the ballpark of $18,000 to $20,000 for those five units. Eighteen dollars to $20,000 for those five units. Now, can you go piece it together on Facebook Marketplace for less money? Yes, of course you can. It's just, it's a lot to do. It's, it's a whole thing. I know people that have done it and low key, I kind of did that. I didn't buy a used unit until years into the business, probably two. So you can totally do that and get that started for cheaper, but you do run into other challenges having used units. They're worn out, they're not taken care of, they're faded, they have holes, they, the seams rip. There's, there's a whole bunch of different issues that can come up, okay? Buying new is the best way to do it if you wanna have a real business, okay? We're just gonna call it $20,000. What this doesn't include is a hammer to put the anchors in. Okay, it's only like 10 bucks, okay? Tarps to go under each of them. Kind of depends where you are. If you're where I am, you need a tarp to go under the whole thing because if not, it's a muddy total nightmare like 95% of the time. If you're somewhere like Denver where it's rockier, maybe you're in Arizona where it's like super hard ground, you can get away with much smaller, cheaper tarps so it's gonna go just under the pool or just where the kids get out of the bounce house or at the end of the combo slide whatever, but that's not included in the $20,000. Extension cords, also not included in that. You need to buy 12 gauge cords. I suggest just getting 100 foot cords so you always have the maximum length and you don't have to fiddle with 50 footers and 100 footers and do all this crazy math, okay? Those cords are like 100 plus dollars a piece, a piece. Okay, there's 500 more bucks. Boom, right there, you need one for each unit. Do you have a truck? If so, cool. You can flip them back into the back of the truck. It's a whole big pain, dude. It's not easy to do, but then you don't gotta buy a trailer. You're just gonna kind of trade off the easy trailer for the excruciating 
<laughs> excruciating hard work, okay? Flipping them into the trailer or into the truck, okay? You're probably able to get maybe two in there. They got to stand up. It's kind of sketchy, okay? But you got a truck, cool. Ooh, you don't have a truck, you got an SUV. Can you deliver an SUV? Sure, when I first started, I delivered stuff in the Armada. My wife's all got an Armada and we flipped it in the back and shoved it in and then we'd pull it out and it was a, right, fine, it was fine. But we can only deliver one unit at a time. And when you have a water slide that's got dripping water all over it, you don't really want it in the back of your wife's Armada. I think I did two deliveries, I went and bought a trailer. Cool, what trailer should I buy? Well, you're talking to a guy who's been through, who has four now, and went through three other ones to get to these four, all right? My suggestion to everybody now that I've been doing this as long as I have is just shut up and buy the one you need right from Jump, which is a 16 foot long utility trailer that is roughly six feet, 10 inches wide, tandem axle with brakes. That trailer is gonna run you anywhere between $4,000 and $5,000. My favorite one is the Big Tex 70 Pi. It's about 4,500 as of recording this video, okay? That's got the lower sides on it. It's gonna cost you more money to get higher sides, which higher sides makes your life way, way, way easier, but it is what it is, okay? That's what I suggest buying from Jump. Now, you can do what I did and go to Facebook Marketplace and buy some goofy, I bought a little red tilt trailer for dirt bikes or four wheelers or something. We had no title, it was a whole thing. Um, and then I built wooden rails on the side of it. Again, it was a whole thing, okay? But I got it for 500 bucks. Now this is 2019 prices, okay? So probably lower. I had that for a while, had no ramp, it was a total pain. So then I sold that for 500 bucks and went and bought one from Lowe's. That was about 900 bucks. As of recording this, I think they're like 900 or a thousand bucks, okay? Wire bottom, five by eight. Super light, super easy to move, has a gate that comes down. It's low to the ground because it has like these little 10 speed tires, okay? But it's easier to load. It was easier to move. I could just move it around by grabbing the tongue and putting it in my garage, okay? That thing delivered so many bounce houses, it was crazy. It delivered so many units over about two years that I finally cracked it. It cracked by the tongue on the rail. It's just crazy, okay? Had it repaired. Then it got too small. Like it was just so small, the smallest trailer ever, okay? So I got rid of that and I got a 14 foot long red trailer that's six feet wide. You've probably seen it in a couple of my older videos. Thought it was the end all be all. No, it's not wide enough, okay? You can't put two water slides next to each other. It's not wide enough. You have to like stagger them and then you can't get stuff on and your bounce houses are falling down, your water slides are falling down. It's a whole thing, okay? So then I still have that. Then I also, while I had that, I bought a 10 foot trailer, six foot by 10, thinking, let me get the big one and the little one. No, it's too little, okay? I still have both of those. We do use the six by 10 every now and then if we're gonna go run two units, three units, one unit, we'll hitch that up super quick, okay? Arguably, maybe you do need that little one for those little, I call them hot shots. You know, that's a, like a delivery term. But we're gonna go run one unit somewhere. That one does come in handy. So maybe you buy that small trailer first and keep it forever like that one. But then I bought 16 foot trailer that's six feet, 10 inches wide, tandem axle with brakes. Life immediately better. I bought another one two weeks later. So now we have two of those, okay? Then we have that red one and we have that black one, okay? I've been through so many trailers. You just just, just go buy the 16 foot one, tandem axle with brakes. Just go do it, get it over with, spend the four grand, boom. Bad news is though, we're now up to like $25,000 to start the bounce house business and we ain't even done yet. What about the dolly? What about the dolly? So back there, mine's right there, that red one. Oh, where it is, there you go. This red one, it's called a Rolls All. It's absolutely amazing. R-O-O-L-S-A-L-L, rollsall.com, okay? Mm -hmm. It's motorized. That thing's $4,000 to $5,000, depending on which one you buy. Again, as of recording this, the further you are away from this video, the more expensive I'm sure it got, okay? But it changes the game. It's the number two most important invention in the history of the bounce house business, the motorized dolly. So go get yourself a rolls all. Just spend four grand to get yourself a rolls all, okay? Huh, now we're up to 30 grand, okay? Now, can you get away without the $4,000 dolly? You can, I just don't suggest it. You can go buy the $120 tractor supply dolly. It's green, has big inflatable wheels. We all had one. Every single person that's ever been in this business practically had that dolly. It's okay for combos. It's great for bounce houses. It's okay for combos. Water slide, it's gonna kind of suck. 18 foot single lane, it's not like the worst thing ever. But as soon as you start getting big stuff, it's just, it just gets brutal. As soon as you start getting busy, 
delivering five units in a day, picking up five units in a day, that thing is brutal. It's gonna kill you, okay? You can go buy a little bit better dolly from spacewalksales.com. It's called the Supermover Dolly. I've got two of them over there. They're behind the camera. But uh, it's like this black one. It's got these uh, awesome forklift style forks on it. We absolutely love those. Um, I've had two for a while. As of recording this video, I think they're 650 bucks. 650 okay it is the entry level dolly for sure it is the best bang for your buck dolly no questions ask for i mean we have 55 units now and we still have two and the guys still actually use them and like them so those are great spacewalksales.com super mover dolly okay next tier up from that you can go to rolls all and get this bad boy but with no motor okay you're talking like 1400 bucks i think as of recording this so there you go. There's your options on Dolly, but you need one. You get a Dolly that's made for inflatables. Your life is that much easier. You get one with a motor. Like You'll be able to scale this business so much faster. It's a great investment because it lets you scale the business faster. Okay, You can move more units. You're excited to move the units because it's easy. You're fresh when you get home, so you have a life. You can go spend time with your kids or your family or whatever. You can also have a life when you get home on Monday from a long weekend of rentals, and you're not busted and broken down till Wednesday, you can go work on your inflatable office website. You can go work on your Facebook marketing. Like you can go do all these things. You have energy. It's the second most important thing. The motorized dolly is the second most important invention in the history of the bounce house business. Okay. So now we're like 30 grand. If you buy the motorized one, 25,000, if you don't buy the motorized dolly. Okay. We haven't added insurance on top of that. So now we're at 30,000 or 35,000. So at this point, what I'm going to do, I feel like we've kind of gone to a dark place. I'm going to inject a little bit of positivity into the video, okay? And we're going to kind of shift back. I'm going to give you a pro, a good thing, a positive thing about starting a bounce house business. Before I do that, however, I'm going to add one more little expense to it, and that's marketing, okay? We've got to talk marketing real quick because if you're a real entrepreneur, you already know, like, you can't just open a website and buy five bounce houses and an expensive-ass dolly and an expensive-ass trailer and, like, be making money, right? you got to get customers, okay? So the best way to do that is run Google ads. Why? because Google ads is a person that typed into Google, bounce house rental near me, water slide rental near me, and then you pop on the page as a paid advertiser at the top, so they click you because you're at the top. Yes, it works very well. No, I know, you never click on sponsored ads, I get that. But and guess what, you're the exception, everybody else does. So that gets you to the top of the list so you can get customers quickly. You can do your own Google ads, they won't work very well, there and there it's it's just it's complicated dude it's complicated i highly suggest having event hawk do it is worth the money you'll make more money from the ads to offset what you pay them but go to event hawk go check out event hawk there's a link down in the description event hawk you can even save some money by using my link that's down in the description so do do that okay now on to the pro that i told you i was going to give you because our video went to a dark place okay so to start a bounce house business this is a huge pro if you come in and you're a real deal entrepreneur and you're a real deal businesswoman or a real deal businessman, you can come in and you can dominate the market pretty freaking fast. Here's why. A lot of the people that started this are a sheriff or they're a oil field worker or whatever, right? They have some kind of career that makes them good money. This is their side hustle. They started this business to pay for junior's college. Maybe they started it for their son. They are not doing all of the things I'm telling you in this video, okay? They're not doing them all. So you come into the market and you do all those, you can crush them and you can crush them quickly. Now, when I say crush them, the market is plenty healthy. They'll keep getting clients. But what I mean is you can just come in and be busier than them, right? As a brand new company, when you do it right, there is probably one to two, depending on where you live, big, 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 big companies that dominate the area. So where I'm at, there's two of us. There's me and there's Jake, okay? In Atlanta, there's two of them that I just know of. I'm not from Atlanta, but I just, I know of already, right? There's ATL Bounce House and there's Jumptastic. In Boston, Busy B dominates everybody, okay? The good thing about the big K, I'm like mid-sized compared to those other guys. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that big compared to those other guys, okay? But I'm big for my area, okay? The good thing about the big guys or the big for their area guys like me is we have a lot of scale that we do but there's a lot of scraps that we leave around that we don't wanna deal with, okay? Could be clients that want longer rental times, could be people that are, we're too expensive for, could be deliveries that are too far away that we can't fit in. There's a million different things here. We leave scraps around for all the other people to go and, and lap up and, and live off of, and there's plenty to go around, okay? So you come in, like I'm talking as a real entrepreneur and do all these things I'm telling you, 
you'll dominate the scraps. You'll take up all the scraps, okay? And as you keep eating the scraps, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna grow. Your little company's gonna grow, and pretty soon you're gonna get a text message from one of us bigger guys because we're gonna wanna be able to refer you clients that we can't take on because we wanna be able to referral clients to good places, okay? And we kind of start to make this like friendship and like we're not really competition. It's kind of cool. But if you come into this industry as a real entrepreneur and do all the things I'm telling you to do, you can dominate all those scraps quickly and scale rather rapidly because the rest of your competition just doesn't do business well. I don't know anywhere else to put it and I'm not trying to be rude or mean because obviously I'm in this business and it is business means a lot to me. But as I said, yep, you need 30K to start this off right. Okay, now can you come in there and be the uninsured guy for $100 on Marketplace? Like, I'm not telling you what you can and can't do. I'm just telling you, dear God, don't do that. Think about what happens if a kid gets hurt on one of these. That's a lawsuit, okay? Yes, they signed a waiver, okay? But it's gonna go to court. And guess what happens in court? A lawyer's gonna pick you apart. So guess what you need? A lawyer. Guess what's expensive? A lawyer. So if you're even gonna have a chance to win the case, you're gonna spend a gajillion dollars on a lawyer. Like, just stop. You need insurance. You gotta have it. Do not start this business without it. Cannot stress that enough. Okay, back to our pros and cons list. This is gonna be on the cons side of the paper. Number four, okay? This is not a weekend dominant business. This is a business that will dominate your weekend. So if you, my friend, love your weekends and you're like lover boy, you're living for the weekend, this ain't for you. I'm telling you, this ain't for you. Now, yes, you think you are smarter than everybody else and you can do Friday to Monday rentals and still have your weekends. It doesn't work, dude. It doesn't work. Your phone still rings. The blower broke. You still got all these issues. People want to rent on Saturday. It's just, it's a weekend dominant business no matter what you do. Can you reserve some uh, work-life balance by doing the Friday to Monday thing? Sure, you can. I did it in the early days, okay? But here's what happens. Number one, your units get beat to shit your inventory does not last you very long, okay? Especially if you bought used inventory. It's gonna go fast and you just almost can't even grow because you're just constantly selling and rebuying, selling and rebuying. You just stay the same size like forever. Like it just doesn't work very good, okay? The other thing that's gonna happen is you make less money, okay? You rent the same bounce house for $230 that I do from Friday to Sunday and I just do Saturday, I can rent it again on Sunday. See that? It's called flipping units. That's what we refer to it as in the industry. But I can make way more money, all right? I also get all my equipment picked up in time, and then it comes back to the shop. It can get cleaned, and it's not out there in the sun getting baked for freaking four days every single weekend. So my advice on this is you didn't start a business so it would be easy. So don't start a business to try and make it be easy. Just because you think the bounce house business is easy to get into doesn't mean you should come here and make it the easy way and do Friday to Monday. Like You're just messing everything up for everybody. Just stop. If you wanna be successful, you've gotta give your weekends, okay? Now what that means is you make all your money on the weekends, you do all your work on the weekends, your weekdays, they're wide open, dude. You can go do all sorts of stuff on the weekdays. Uh, back in the day when I was less busy with this life, like the, um, <clears throat> the live show and the YouTube channel and all of my online personality and all the stuff that I do, Facebook group, all that, okay? Back when I was just a rental guy, my friends would be like, man, it just sucks you gotta work all weekend. And my reply was, man, that just sucks you gotta work Monday through Friday. Like, I do some work on Friday, I drop stuff on Saturday, drop stuff on Sunday, maybe pick a few up on Monday, I got a guy that cleans them for me. I'm out there working like half a day, half a day, two full days, I'm like, three days a week I work, bro, compared to your five, okay? That has changed for me now because the jump off is big enough, plus I do all sorts of other things, okay? So I pretty much work seven days a week because um, weekdays, I'm doing all of this kind of stuff, now weekends, I'm you know running the guys. I'm the coach, okay? I'm the coach. I'm not the quarterback on the field anymore. I'm the coach on the sidelines, making sure everything goes smoothly. But it doesn't matter. Like my weekends are sacrificed, okay? I'm up here every Saturday morning helping the guys load at 6 a.m. Every Saturday morning, up here helping them load at 6 a.m. Maybe I'll bring them donuts. Maybe I'll make them coffee. Like whatever. I'm just I'm here to make sure the business runs smoothly. I'm gonna do the hard things, not the easy things. I didn't get into business because it was easy. I got into business because it's my passion. I'm a businessman, so I'm gonna do it right. So your work days on the weekends are basically gonna be some version of Saturdays, 5.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., roughly, okay? We started leaving everything actually overnight, so I'm kind of breaking my own rule over there, but it's just a pain to go grab things on Saturday night. It's a pain to staff more expensive on payroll, and then you gotta go kick kids off water slides and disappoint them, it's just not great, okay? So we leave everything till Sunday. So then our Sundays are generally 
a little bit later start usually because you don't have all of the time crunch of all of those drop-offs. So we'll start at like 6.30 and then it runs to like usually 2.30 and then we're good and we go do a short route on Monday to pick up all of Sunday's stuff, okay? But that's what your weekend's gonna look like. Weekend mornings dominated by this business, period, end of story. If you're into coaching your kid's soccer team, if you're into fishing early and Saturday morning, this business is not for you. Just trust me on that. The only way that you can kind of get around what I'm telling you is if you get to my size and you can hire two to three delivery crews. So you need at least six to eight guys for that and you need at least enough work that they can go all do all that and there's still money left over for you. So what I do is I usually come up here in the morning, okay? I get here at 5.45, something like that, get all the lights on, kind of get everything cooking, I get some things staged. I may hitch a trailer or two before the guys all get here at six usually, okay? Then we load up everything and the trucks are on the road at seven, okay? So everybody leaves, I lock up. I may uh, tuck some pallets back in, just kind of tidy some stuff up, maybe get something ready for tomorrow or like last weekend we had a foam party, okay, in the evening. A foam party started at five. So I got the foam daddy foam cannon all set, kind of up by the rolling door, got all the pieces ready, took inventory, made sure I had everything that I needed, cords, all, all the stuff that goes with the foam party stuff, okay? And then I jet, I'm back home by like 7.30, okay? I'm at home, I've got calls coming in from, uh, last weekend I had calls coming in from all three trucks, just asking small little miscellaneous questions, okay? Well, one of the trucks ran into a weird issue where they didn't have gates on their house. They wanted the bounce house, big actually dual lane combo in their backyard and wanted us to go through the house with it, literally in the front door. Like those are the kind of calls that I'm getting now, right? But I'm at home with the kids, okay? I'm making breakfast, I'm doing whatever, okay? Al also as the guys are dropping off, I'm charging people's cards, okay? If they're balanced, they want the card charged for the balance, I'm doing that as we go, okay? But I've got a pretty, mostly normal life on Saturday after about 7.30, okay? But it took me a long time to get there. It's hard to staff a business that size with that many guys that can do things correctly. Like, it's tough, okay? So you're looking like four years of you doing it on Saturdays and Sundays before you can get to what I just described, okay? Four years of having no Saturday morning and no Sunday really at all because by the time you get home on Sunday, you're usually pretty sunburnt and tired, right? And you just wanna chill and relax. So just FYI, that's the business. If you didn't already, please go hit that subscribe button. It should be right there, it should be right there, right on the video, there's a little thing that says subscribe. Just go hit that and you'll be subscribed to the channel for more hot tips, okay? More bounce house business content. I also am a Christmas light contractor, so I put out Christmas light business content of how to start a Christmas light business, okay? And then just generally speaking, I love business. So I put out a lot of content that is general business advice. So even if you, even if I just scared you out of starting a bounce house business, that's cool. Still hit the subscribe button right there because I'm gonna bring you some more inspiration and more some, some more business stuff and I'll help you start your business some way, shape or form, I promise that. So in closing, the bounce house business really has nothing to do with the bounce house business. You just have to ask yourself, do you have the motivation and the capital to start a regular business? Now, yes, you don't need hundreds of thousands of dollars to start this business because you don't have to buy a brick and mortar store. You don't have to buy POS software and, and a point of sale, like the cash register. You know, if you're gonna open a coffee shop, you gotta buy, I don't know how, what, how many thousands of dollars the espresso machines cost and all that stuff, okay? Bounce house business, you don't have all those huge costs, okay? If you're gonna start a lawn care business, I don't know what lawn mowers cost, but I bet they're like five grand for a riding lawn mower, okay? And the backpack blower thing, like all that stuff's gonna be probably more expensive than starting a bounce house business, okay? So you don't need hundreds of thousands of dollars to start this, but you definitely need tens of thousands of dollars to start this. So in closing, basically what I wanna say is, if you want to start a business, badass, look into the bounce house business. If you wanna start a bounce house business because it's easy, you're wrong, you're wrong. Go watch some more of my videos so I can prove you wrong, okay? Beware, they are kind of inspirational, it's just my personality. I'm not trying to inspire you to do something you don't wanna do, okay? But I want you to make an informed decision because this is not easy and it's not quick and it's not what you see me dropping off a $400 water slide in 23 minutes, it's just not what it is. So, all right, there we go, there's the video. Should you start a bounce house business? I'm not sure, you gotta answer that. 
Hit me up on Instagram if you've got any questions, at Nico Glass. You guys can also drop comments down below. I answer every comment in the video, and I answer every DM I get on Instagram. So go check that out. Also, if you're still you know, just compelled to start the Bounce House business, go get in my Facebook group. It's called Bounce House Business Mentors. If you don't answer my questions, you don't get in my Facebook group. So answer all the questions legitly, and there we go. Should you start a bounce house business? Been wanting to make this video forever. I hope I brought you some value and I hope I brought you some inspiration and I hope I scared a couple of you away because this is a real business and I'm, I'm just, I'm tired of buying you guys out. I'm trying to buy, an, actually that's not true. I love buying businesses where they got in and they shouldn't have. So if you guys are near me and you want to start a bounce house business and you're not ready for it, do it because uh, I'm going to buy you. I'm going to buy you out. <laughs> okay, there we go. Thanks for watching guys. Love you. Peace out. Okay, so... Uh, after the fact here, I got a fun fact for you. So I actually, I shot that in the warehouse because I figured it'd like be a cool backdrop, right? All the units behind me. Dude, it's June in Louisiana. I am sweating so bad. I was like praying I didn't have like sweat beads rolling down my forehead. So now I'm back in my nice cooled, uh, my nice air conditioned office here. Um, let me show you around a little bit. So this is our like break section. Yeah, there's bottles of Empathy wine. It's a long story. It's a long story. I bought them to support Gary Vaynerchuk because he's taught me so much. Okay. Uh, here's some strap stuff and some other stuff. Here's a sewing machine where I make all of our prototypes myself. Say what? Here's where we ship out. Okay. This is small time right now. We're, we're, we've got um, a huge amount of straps on the way. So this is going to look very different. It's going to be full of inventory here very soon. Okay. There's the door in our trucks. Okay. I keep a little trailer dolly in here. So that way we park our trailers right out here. Where am I at? Yeah. Right over here. And, uh, it's kind of tight sometimes. And I'm like, right. I'm just like the old lazy guy, I guess. So I'll just go take that out. <laughs> I'll just pull the trailer out. And so I can hitch it up. It's way easier. Right. And then we got our water machine. And then some filing cabinets. There's my desk. That's where all the magic happens. There we go. But anyways, I just wanted to tell you guys that I'm sweaty beyond belief. But I hope you liked the video. It was worth it. So I'm going to go take a shower when I go. Peace.